Good morning. Uh, today we are designing, eh? We are designing a circuit where motor one must start and after 10 seconds, motor two must kick in, but we won't be able to stop motor one until motor two stops. Here is the circuit. And here is the statement. Right. So, this circuit, as you can see, it has been wired accordingly. So now, we want to demonstrate what we have just said, that motor one must kick in. Then, when it kicks in, the timer must kick in and start to, uh, to count that after 10 seconds, we must now be able to actuate or to activate motor two. So, according to this uh, panel, this is my motor one, this is my motor two. So, if I switch on, this is the stop and start for motor one, this is the stop and start for motor two. So, let's demonstrate whether this circuit has been wired according, according to the specifications given. So, we are switching on the breaker. Let's see with uh, motor one. You see motor one kicked in? Right, it kicked in. As you can see, the plunger is sucked in. Right? Now, let's, let's, let's see even when the, the conductor kicked in, you can see that the timer is also kicked in. Don't worry, I've just used my... Is it a study outer? Yeah, it's a study outer, but it will work. It, it will do what I want to do. <laughs> Right, so the timer has also kicked in. Now we are switching on motor two. This is my motor two, ne? right? This is the conductor for motor two. Ne? Don't say that this is a motor. Uh -uh. It's a conductor to power motor two. So this is the switch, the start button. This is the start button for motor two. You can see the conductor two is switched what? Switched on. Or oh, you can see that the plunger is no longer out like this, it's sucked in. Now, let us look at the situation whereby the condition which you are given is that we are not able to switch off motor one before we switch off motor two. Is that so? Did we wire correctly? Let's see. This is the stop for motor one. I think you can go back so that you can take the ball. This is the stop for motor one. Look at it. This conductor cannot come out until I switch off motor two. Let me show you why. Let me show you why. Uh, you can check here. You can check here. Our M2 normally open is connected in parallel with our stop. For motor one. So even if I press here, simply because motor two is energized, it is closed here. So we are going to have a parallel path of current coming through this normally closed to here. It's sort of like motor two normally open short circuits our top button for motor one. Hence, you see that if I do this, it doesn't what? It doesn't stop until I deactivate motor 2 when I deactivate motor 2 like this that is when you can see I can now stop my motor 1 this is our lesson for the day see you in our next episode of motor designing